On Wednesday, Vice President Kamala Harris stepped into the lion's den on Fox News for a rather combative interview. Supposed to be a so cakewalk are they misguided, the 50 percent? Are they stupid? What, oh, what God, is it? I would never say that about the American people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy within, within, an enemy within, talking about the American people, suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. So Harris, I mean, she turned that around. Okay, and was like, I'm not going to talk about the bad about the American people. I'm not the one who's doing that. It's Donald Trump. <laughs> so that right there was his attempt to try to get uh, another basket of deplorables soundbite. Okay, that they can use, that Trump can use in the last couple of weeks of the election against her, uh, and she didn't fall for it. That's smart. You take an argument, you flip it around. That's a that's a prosecutor move, no doubt. Okay. Uh, now, when she further hit Trump on this issue, Bear attempted to use a video clip from his recent town hall to try to dismantle her argument. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was, like, threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest oh gangster. <laughs> no, it's right. true. We've no, but think question. of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. <laughs> So, Brett, I, I'm sorry, and with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated when he's speaking uh, about the American people. That's not what you just showed. Well, he was asked no, about that no, specific No, 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 that's not what you just showed, in all no, fairness no, no, no. and respect you, to you. I'm telling you that was the question that we asked him. Uh, you didn't show that, and here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has talked about locking people up because they disagree agree with him. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, the President of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. He's quoted in the Bob Woodward book that way, yes. L let me ask you this, no, Madam no, Vice no, President. You call let's not Donald Trump. The significance you, you, of you that. call Donald Trump. That last part right there, oof, really illustrative. Like, shut up, 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 shut up. How do you call it on, on, on this bad faith video that I had queued up just for just this situation? Now I'm covered for Trump. <laughs> no wonder Bear had that video ready. It, Again, but she, she shut him down. That said, wasn't the question, all right? Here's what Trump said in an interview with Maria Bartiromo. He said, I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within. We have some very bad people, some sick people. Radical left lunatics. Who's a radical left lunatics? Uh, anybody who has an opinion that is different than him, uh, essentially. And he said, it should be handled very easily, uh, by, if necessary, the National Guard, or if really necessary, by the military. So, sicken the military on his political opponents. On Tuesday, Trump also called Democrats, quote, very dangerous, they're Marxists and communists, and fascists. They're the threat to democracy. <laughs> so, tell me you don't know what any of those words mean. Well, that actually tell me what any of those words mean, because uh, he doesn't know. <laughs> now, what's great about that town hall, by the way, the Harris Faulkner one, is that it was purposely packed with Trump supporters. Of course it was. <laughs> you, you know what Trump's done? He's basically been barricading himself in his own ideological echo chamber you know, bunker, <laughs> okay, while not doing challenging interviews anymore. In fact, he's pulled out of all the you know, recent interviews, unless uh, unless it's from a, a friendly audience. And so, not good. Now, here's Harris, to contrast that, strolling up into Fox News and basically overturning their apple cart, all right? <laughs> because that's what this was. Harris, uh, once again, Republicans underestimate Kamala Harris for two reasons. One, she is black. Two, she is a female. 
you shouldn't underestimate her in how effective that she can actually be, uh, you know, both from her prosecutorial background and her experience as a, a, as a senator, okay? Uh, now, obviously, these comments uh, are a bit of a problem for Republicans. Uh, Republican pollster uh, Whit Ayers writes, he certainly makes it difficult for down-ballot Republicans because people in the media will continually ask them to react to something outrageous Donald Trump has said when they really want to concentrate on their own race and their own message. Well, I mean, sad day for you. <laughs> the the problem's coming from the top of the ticket, okay? Um, another person, this is uh, someone who requested anonymity, all right? So to comment candidly on Trump's remarks, said it would really be disturbing to most Republican legislators if that were to occur, because that's not how we work as a country. That's not how we behave as a democracy. Mm. And this is uh, on the question of deploying the military against their political enemies, represented by Ron Donalds, uh, who is a prominent House Republican, tried to dismiss the comments. He said this, obviously, we don't want to have the United States military. We're not going to have that be deployed in the United States. That's been longstanding law in our country since the founding of the Republic. Mm. Right. So, uh, but, okay, Donald Trump has said that he wants the military deployed against his political enemies. That's just a fact. Now, that said, um, Harris pushed back on this. And she, again, combative interview, right? She pushed back on the immigration stuff, pushed back on, uh, on, on this. You know, this is obvious gotcha question. And she did so quite forcefully, which is good. It's what you're supposed to do. Um, that said, Trump's response is unhinged, as usual. Uh, he writes over on his uh, platform. Truth, truth, central. Great job by Brett Baer in his interview with Lion Kamala Harris. She has a massive and irredeemable case of Trump derangement syndrome. Bro, that's your opponent. <laughs> She's running against you. Uh, what do you expect her to talk about? <laughs> okay, like... Honestly, like, yeah, she has to compare and contrast herself to you and then criticize you because she's running against you. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the other thing, though, right? So if, if uh, you know, not being able to stop talking about Trump because you're running against Trump means that you're, you have Trump derangement syndrome, right? Okay, well, what's this whole thing about you constantly talking about illegal immigration? And, and basically, not just the you know, thing that happens, right, but lying consistently about immigrants. Do we call that immigrant derangement syndrome? Is, is just talking about anything too much? Is that, is that derangement syndrome now? <laughs> Especially since some of the things that he says are actually deranged. Oh, they're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the pets of the people that live there. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. That is actually deranged. Okay. Uh, but it, it, I don't know. This is a, it seems like classic projection to me. Uh, speaking of projection, of course, you have Trump supporters that are melting down over this. One example here is Republican strategist Andrew Sarabian, who wrote, Kamala Harris is the opposite of unflappable. She is a self and she is self imploding and getting visibly angry because for the first time in four years she is facing a few tough questions. Uh, so wait, when she forcefully answers bad faith questions, okay, um, she is angry. Oh, angry black woman. But wait, when Trump does it, he's somehow strong. And then, by the way, when he decides to just ignore all the media <laughs> and say, oh, it's just unfair, and so I'm just not going to do it anymore, that makes him strong. But Kamala Harris goes into Fox News, and she's imploding, weak. She can't handle tough questions. She seems to handle them pretty well, even if I didn't like some of the answers, right? Um, it seems like a, a bit of a double standard in action here. Again, I, I don't really think that she seemed angry. Um, it just, again, being forceful uh, about her answers. And for the most part, they were good answers. Now, that said, uh, I think she was a little weak on the trans, uh, defending the trans community. I think that she could have defended them better. But 
at the same time, she didn't go in, in, in the direction that some of the Democrats have went recently on that issue. Um, look, she basically ha had reaffirmed her commitment to following the law on transgender surgeries. In this case, uh, a law that requires transgender inmates receive medically necessary care, which includes gender affirming care. Um, I, apparently, this bothers some people. It doesn't bother me. I don't really care. <laughs> okay. Turns out, I believe that humans, uh, the inmates are also human beings. And look, the reality is there's a lot of people in the, that are in prison for drug crimes. Okay. Uh, and or poverty related crimes. And so do I care if they are getting gender affirming health care? No, I don't. Uh, now, her answer, though, by the way, is a lot better than what we saw from Colin Allred and Sherrod Brown. OK, so they leaned into the anti-trans messaging when confronted with this idea that, oh, yes, you want the boys and girls sports, don't you? What? <laughs> no, trans, trans girls are girls. Trans women are women. Trans men are men. <laughs> and this is not a widespread issue. Uh, and yet Republicans, they have, they have spent tens of millions of dollars to try to, you know, do anti-trans messaging here, even though it, it worked miserably during the last midterm elections. So uh, congratulations. Yay. <laughs> uh, now, that said, Harris's answer on that, I'm going to follow the law, is a lot better than what we saw from them. Sure. But it's clear that Republicans have been trying to use this anti-trans playbook. And so far, I think she realizes that it's just not going to be effective. Turns out, though, um, you don't actually have to cede ground to transphobes in order to win an election. And she didn't do that. So, again, a little bit of light criticism there, but otherwise a fairly solid interview in what is essentially hostile territory. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shutting down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.